Hello and welcome to another chart of the day uh, at uh, thetraderguy.com and in this series, uh, in case you haven't seen the first couple ones, uh, this is a lesson in observing a chart, looking at a chart. It's not necessarily going to be analysis per se to take a trade, but the idea is for new traders to be able to look at a chart and immediately start to identify things. In front of you is cable, it is the pound dollar pair. And I'll go ahead and zoom way out. And you can see I have two lines on this. And the question then becomes, of course, why do you have two lines 100 pips apart? Well, a lot of times what you'll see in the market is you'll see an area that um, <clears throat> looks like resistance. And we certainly had that here at 157. But you can see that we keep kind of just poking up a little bit higher. And if you look 100 pips above, there's a lot of support there. And, and remember, these areas tend to react over and over again. You can see we came up here almost to 158, a few pips shy, and then fell. And then it was resistance and support several times. I mean, it's been chopped through several times, but there are some distinct areas uh, in, in this particular chart that you can see at certain times that it matters. For example, right here we have a nice cluster right there. And <clears throat> looking at the chart the way I do, lately what we've seen uh, in, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. This will help a little bit with the shape, at least it'll look a little, a little more uh, clear. Um, lately what we've been seeing with this pair has been a lot of resistance at 157. And I recognize that 158 also mattered too. So for me, it seemed like a 100 pip thick line, I guess. It's a zone, not a line. But what we also had, I'll go ahead and change the width of this to look a little bit more impressive. Um, we also had an area, and again, it's defined by this entire area here, but you can see that price was trying to break through and it just couldn't. We also had this. So voila, we have. An ascending triangle. Now we find ourselves in an interesting predicament. This happens to be very early Friday that I'm recording this. Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday. Okay, so on Tuesday we broke out, we hit the 158 layer area and pulled back. Basically making this cluster resistance. It was kind of the last test, if you will. Now that we've broken out over this triangle, the question then becomes, what do you do next? Now there's two different ways to play a breakout. You can either play it right away, um, which for me, again, 158 was the real test. So really you would have only gotten involved in it somewhere in this, this candle uh, or possibly even the daily close and you'd be a little bit down now, but not much. Um, or you wait for a pullback and that's, this candle right here is very interesting. It's a shooting star, it's a very bearish candle and it looks like we will probably fall back down. Well, what was one support then becomes resistance and vice versa. So this was resistance, it should turn into support. Looking at this, I think that we will more than likely get a little bit of a pullback, but a supportive candle here will attract buyers as we continue higher. Um, breakouts do this all the time. They break out, they come back, more people get involved, because at this point in time you have two different groups of people looking at this. You have the people who were short to begin with. They are at break even, they're happy to get out of the market. You know, they were losing for a while. They got a little bit of a break, they figure I'm getting out of the market. You have people who wanted to be long but never got a chance to be long and they see right here, hey I can get in at that same price or close enough to it so that I can participate as well. Very interesting uh, dynamic but it seems to repeat itself over and over. Another thing that is interesting about these triangles is they can be measured. Uh, I'm going to use quick and dirty math here but I'm assuming that we broke out at 158 and I also look at the low here as 152 and a half. So looking at this, I see 550 pips, right? Because what you do is you subtract the height, the, the top of the, the, the breakout area from the bottom. This is 550 pips. 
So it's interesting, and you'll see this if you actually go through old charts. Time and time again, you'll see this actually works out. So what you do is you add 550 pips to 158. In this particular case, that makes it uh, 163 and a half. So looking at the highs is right around 163, maybe 20 or so. So, and I should state that only an idiot would let this run up to 163, say 30, and then get taken out of the trade in case it pulled back. Once you get that high, really don't argue over 10, 20 pips. Uh, just do what you do, you know, whatever you do to manage your exits. But you'll notice how it lines up really nice and symmetrically. We get break out of this, and then you can just add that same 550, and it basically ends up here at the very top. It's a complete round trip. That's something you see a lot as well. So, looking at this triangle, you have a lot of different things going on. I mean, you notice that the lows are getting higher. It's pressure building. Think of it, a, a great example somebody once told me. This is my drawing of waves, by the way. And this is a beach ball. If you hold it underwater, eventually, you know, you slip or you let it go or whatever. That beach ball explodes to the upside. And that's essentially what we're seeing here this shooting star might be the signal that we're about to come back and find support. Now, if you're more conservative or you don't happen to be in this trade, certainly you come back and you wait to see maybe a hammer or something like that, uh, the fact that the area is holding up, and then, you know, you and a bunch of other people get involved and in, in, with a little bit of luck and, and a little bit of tenacity, reach the 163, 163 and a half level, and take your profit, make a nice tidy 550 pips. This is the type of thing that you will see time and time again. A lot of times you'll see them in rectangles. It's the same principle. You just measure the height, comes back, it retests, etc. So having said that, it looks like, at least in this particular setup, we have a nice technical setup. What I do know, regardless of what happens, I'm not selling this pair. Uh, we've, we've made a pretty significant move. It needs to pull back a little bit. That's fine. But you're playing around with small ball if you decide to short here because what are you looking at 50 pips maybe as opposed to being patient let it run a day or two and see if you can find support and then you can aim for 550 um, don't let the big numbers uh, get you uh, intimidated 550 pips uh, while it is a nice long running trade the truth of the matter is, is it comes down to position size I know a lot of you new traders get freaked out when you hear things like 100 pip stop loss but you know it comes down to position size. So take a look at the uh, pound dollar chart and tell me what you think. You can always email me at chris at the trader guy dot com. And don't forget, I do have a free, completely free uh, educational forum with hours of videos on it. No cost to you whatsoever. There's there's no gimmick. There's no catch. No nothing. So uh, check it out. And uh, again, uh, happy trading. And I hope you learned something. Thanks.